Hello guys and welcome to my new video and today we'll be looking at the new Holy Paladin build and that is to do with Marad's Dying Breath Legendary. It is going to be a new raiding or raid healing playstyle that emerged during 9.1, especially during the race to world first. We'll talk about everything to do with this playstyle and basically should you play it, should you try it, what are the advantages, how to optimize it and what talents, conduits do you need to succeed and basically general summary of this new playstyle that could be very interesting to try out. Let's go. And get started. So what is this build and why should you try it? Now first of all Marat's Dying Breath legendary build is something that might not actually be recommended by a lot of people. It's more of a niche type of healing playstyle but because it is new. I know a lot of holy paladins who are kind of bored of the playstyle with the shock barrier with the holy shock build might actually want to try this out and see if it works for them. There are big requirements or prerequisites before trying this build. If you look at what Marat's Dying Bread does, Light of Dawn increases your next Light of the Martyr. So Light of the Martyr is going to be a big portion of your playstyle. It increases Light of the Martyr by 10% for each ally healed, means that you want to heal as many allies as you can by Light of Dawn, which sometimes means repositioning yourself, and we'll talk about the common mistakes later. And allows that Light of the Martyr to heal through Beacon of Light, which now, transfer to Beacon, means more tank healing, which is one of the biggest advantages of this build. And on top of that, Light of the Martyr damages you over 5 seconds instead of instantly, which means you might not have this combo of, I'm going to use Light of the Martyr and that is going to be a big AoE damage, I'm dead. Instead, you get the sticking damage, which means stacking leech and getting a bit more leech can really increase your survivability even further. So basically, the main advantage of this build is that you're now going to have more spot healing because you're going to be using Light of the Martyr, and Light of the Martyr is also going to transfer to Beacon, which means more tank healing. So if you're a Ventir Holy Paladin, this is very, very important. It's mainly for Ventir Holy Paladins because if you're a Kirin Holy Paladin who uses a lot of Holy Shocks because of Divine Toll, not using Shock Barrier is probably not that advisable at this given moment. But if you are a Ventir Holy Paladin progressing raid content where you feel that, hey, our tanks are dying too much, there's just not enough tank healing, or maybe you lack that spot of priority spot healing on targets that have the most like Brand of Torment from your Soul Render. Maybe people with chains are dying on Painsmith. Maybe your threat neutralization targets on the Guardians of the first one are not getting enough healing and they're dying due to the debuff. Or maybe Sylvanas, the bleed, is a bit too much to heal and you need more spot healing. This build might be for you. It provides a lot of tank healing because you're going to be running different talent builds. You're going to have double beacons, most likely. You're going to have more spot healing by completely eliminating Wall of Glory and using Light of Dawn followed by Light of the Martyr for big AoE heal and then a big spot heal in order to provide healing but in a different type of way. So is this build better than the Shock Barrier Holy Shock build that a lot of people were running before 9.1? I, I don't know. I honestly think this is something that you can try out, test it out. I don't think this is better. I don't think this is worse. I think this is an alternative type of solution for your guild if you need more tank healing and more spot healing. Otherwise, I would say Shock Barrier build is very, very good. And here's some real play information. This is based on Mythic and Holy Paladins running different builds, running different legendaries, and this is real play information, like I mentioned. But because this is a new build, I feel it has manifested more interest than maybe it probably should. But because of the Race to World first, I feel a lot of people are trying it out. So you can see here, this is the talent build that is probably the most popular build for your Marad's Dying Breath. And it is very popular. And you can see here that the legendary usage in Mythic Raid. It's pretty much split, kind of. You have your Shock Barrier and you have your Marat's Dying Breath. Both are very, very popular. And you can see the different talent builds. And this is what's going to lead to our next segment. How do you optimize Marat's Dying Breath if you do decide to use it? Keep in mind, it is only really optimal for a Ventir Holy Paladin running raid content. I would not use this in Mythic Plus or PvP. It is... Optimal in situations where you need that tank healing and you need more spot healing. I know Sanctum Domination has a lot of spot healing, so I think it's worth trying it out, but I don't think everyone is going to be all of a sudden, this is the best build ever, I'm going to run it for everything. I think it's kind of a combination of what type of healing do you need for that given situation. So don't view this build as the most OP build that everyone should run, because it really isn't like that. It's something different. Let's go to optimization. So this is my Holy Paladin, and there's a couple of things that you absolutely need in terms of your talents, in terms of your conduits, in terms of your equipment. Now, the most important thing that you're gonna need is your legendary. And this is my Holy Paladin, this is my raiding gear, and 
I have my ring, Marat's Dying Bread, on the... Again, it is a jewelry slot. It's gonna have a socket on it. I opted in for Haste first. Again, if you're looking for pure healing, you probably want to go with Haste Mastery, but I end up going with Verse because this build usually has less DPS than the Shock Barrier build because Shock Barrier build has things like Glimmer. So generally speaking, I opted in for versatility to provide more damage because I will have less damage. So take your pick. Haste Verse, Haste Mastery. Haste Mastery probably for the most optimal HPS throughput if you just care about HPS. Besides that, you're going to need a conduit. And that's going to be extremely, extremely mandatory to make this build really work. You're most likely and you probably should be running Vent here. Again, I mentioned this at the start of the video. And this is going to be probably your most popular build, even based on real player information. You're going to have multiple potency conjures that are going to be mandatory. And the one is, is this one. This is the this is the big one. Untempered dedication. Light of the Marathon damages or damage and healing is increased by a certain amount each time it's cast. This effect can stack up to five times and it lasts for 15 seconds. You can kind of see it here. Again, I'm going to use Light of the Marathon on the Ranger. You can see the stacks here. Four, five. And five is the maximum. And we'll talk about not dropping these stacks. We'll talk about how to optimize it. But this is going to be a big part of your Light of the Martyr build. This is one of the reasons why it's so, so potent. So make sure you have this on temp on, on, on tempered dedication. And after this, you're kind of free to make any choices. Now, a lot of people in terms of endurance conduits will go with condensed atmosphere because this is going to be proc from your Light of the Martyr and it's going to do additional healing. Again, more survivability to some extent. And this is one of the biggest ones, Focus Line. Holy Shock critical effect chances increase by 7%. You can swap this out. There is a big debate about whether this is going to be better than your adaptive armor fragment. When you are healed by another player, it increases your intellect by a certain amount. In raid situations, you can honestly kind of flip a coin or see which item level is higher. And generally, you can swap focus light for this. You're always going to want to have token of appreciation because it's always great in raid situations. For raiding build, having this kind of soul bind layout with untempered dedication is very very popular again the other potency conjured is going to be hallow discernment that just works really well which are again ash and hallow now let's go to optimizing your talent builds for talent builds this is going to be quite different from what you usually play as a shock barrier holy shock type of build you're not going to be playing glimmer of light you're not going to be playing crusader smite instead you're going to be picking lights hammer again in this build, based on player, real player information, this is the most popular build. You can still run Bestowed Fate, but a lot of people are going to be running Light's Hammer instead. And that's probably because there is a lot of stacked up moments. So Light's Hammer, this kind of one minute ability. Honestly, one of the biggest mistakes people make is they don't use this enough and they hold on to it for ages. Use it on cooldown if you know you're going to get some value out of it. A lot of the times people just delay it for 2-3 minutes, which I feel is a big mistake. But generally, Light's Hammer or Bestowed Fate, you're always going to be running rule of law no matter what build you run. This is your one of your most amazing abilities in terms of the utility roles for a Holy Paladin. Divine Purpose, Awakening, and Beacon of Fate. This is one of the reasons why this build works. You're going to have additional beacon transfer because of Light of the Martyr. So, Light's Hammer, Orbis of Fate, and Beacon of Fate. These are the main things to change. Outside of that, you're going to have your Marat's Dying Breath, and you're going to have your untempered dedication in terms of your policy conduit you're ready to go in terms of gearing i honestly going to say leech has insane value with this because you saw if i'm using my ladder the matter instead of taking damage straight away i'm taking this slow taking damage and having additional leech is really going to be a big portion in a lot of the fights i did as a holy paladin using this belt i was able to get like leech was doing like 10 percent of my healing so leech is going to create or make or how do I say it? Your survivability is going to be increased. And you might have less chances of dying because of the Marad playstyle. So what is the playstyle? It is still very similar to what you used to play in Holy Shock build. With the basically Shock Barrier build. It was the same kind of deal. Again, you're still going into melee. You're still using a Crusader Strike. This time Crusader Strike is going to generate Holy Power. It's not going to reduce your cooldown on Holy Shock. Because you don't have Crusader Smite. Which is fine. You're still using your generator abilities. You're still using... That holy power that you get by casting Light of Dawn. The most important part is that you're basically never going to be casting World of Glory. That's the basic concept. You're never going to be casting World of Glory because you're going to replace World of Glory with Light of the Martyr in terms of spot heal. So you're providing AoE healing and you're providing single target healing. The most important part, again, let's say you're generating three holy powers. You're using your Light of Dawn. Again, 
the first mistake that I see people make because of the nature of the legendary Marath's Dying Breath, you want to make sure that you hit as many targets as possible. So if you're facing a target here and all of the mobs or all of your friendly targets are here, like your range, your melee and stuff like that, you want to face away and make sure you get as many people as you can. This is a weak word that I have that tells me, okay, I have one person that got hit by my Light of Dawn, so therefore my next Light of the Marather is not going to be that big. So that's basically bread and butter. This is the simple explanation on how to play this playstyle. You make sure you have beacon on the tanks 90% of the time. Again, there has been logs where I've seen where not all of the tanks are taking damage throughout the whole of the fight, and sometimes you might replace your, you know, your single beacon on another priority target. I've seen this happen before, but majority of the time it's keeping your beacons on two of the tanks, making sure you staying in melee, using the same kind of rotation, using a holy shock, using a crusader strike. You're just spending your holy power on Light of Dawn. Make sure you hit as many people as possible. Again, I got Divine Purpose proc right here. This is very important to track your Divine Purpose. After you use your Light of Dawn, you need to make sure you use your Light of the Martyr. Then I have Divine Purpose. I use my Light of Dawn again. I use my Light of the Martyr again. So it's very important not to override the Light of Dawn buff. Make sure you have a good weak aura because a good weak aura is going to honestly account for a lot of your healing. The playstyle is very simplistic, but for people who have been playing your Shock Barrier build for a really long time with basically a 3 button rotation to some extent, I've been playing that for a long time. Getting used to adding Light of the Martyr was a lot harder than I first anticipated because I sometimes overwrite the buff, sometimes I don't notice the buff, and I just use Light of the Martyr by itself. You have to remember, and again, I'm going to use combat logs here, is that your Light of the Martyr without the buff is not going to transfer to beacon targets. So right now, I'm just using Light of the Martyr on this guy here. I have beacon on myself. You can see on the logs, my condensed atmosphere healed me, my Light of the Martyr healed the Ranger, my Light of the Martyr damaged me. So I'm not getting beacon transfer. Like a lot of people, a common misconception is that because I'm using Marath's Dying Breath, all of my Light of the Martyr is going to transfer to beacon targets. That's not true. It's only going to be the cast after Light of Dawn. So if you get three Holy Powers, we're doing it right now, we're casting Light of, uh, Light of Dawn, and then after this, I'm going to cast Light of the Martyr on this guy with Beacon on myself. Light of the Martyr healed the Ranger. Beacon healed me. Then Light of the Martyr damaged me. And then I get my Condensed Atmosphere. It's one of the reasons why a lot of people are running Condensed Atmosphere. Because it's just proccing all the time from Light of the Martyr damage. So, it's all about optimizing that buff. Make sure you get some really, really nice weak cards. After you get, again, a couple of mistakes that I see people also try is that they don't use Light's Hammer enough. I feel like it's a it's a very solid. It's not going to break your damage meters or healing meters, but it's a very solid ability you can use when people are stacked up. Or you can use it for damage sometimes as well. A lot of people use it. I've seen Light's Hammer emerging in Mythic Plus in some real niche situations where it, it does a decent amount of damage. And then the last thing is your Conduit stacks. You saw that I talked about Untampered Dedication. If you're playing this uh, playstyle correctly, you probably will be at 5 stacks most of the time. It, again, it's kind of hard for me to showcase the 5 stacks because I need to generate a lot of holy power. But most likely, you should be at 5 stacks most of the time. You should be using, again, generating your holy power. You should be using your Light of, the, light of Dawn. And then you should be using Light of the Marathon on the people that need it while you have this 5 stacks. You're going to try and always generate holy power. Always cast your Light of Dawn and always cast Light of the Marathon afterwards. You're basically never using World of Glory. You're basically constantly using Light of the Martyr because you don't want this, again, this buff to drop. So this is very simplistic overview. I know I'm spending too much time on this, but I wanted people to kind of see how to play this build. This might not actually increase your HPS. This might be on par in terms of the HPS that the Holy Shock build provides. But it does its healing in a different ways. It provides more tank healing. It provides more spot healing when needed. Because there's a lot of debuffs in Sanctum of Domination. And this is only used by Ben tier Holy Paladins. Make sure to get some really good weak cores. Try not to lose that stack of untampered dedication. Again, you want to try and make sure you have max stacks when you're using it. Light of the Martyr is going to do so much spot healing. It's going to be such a big heal. And if you feel like you're running in the danger of like, maybe I'm taking too much damage because I'm using Light of the Martyr all the time. I, like, I'm, I need so much extra healing. Leech is honestly going to be insane value on this. And it's going to help to keep you safer because again light of the martyr is doing this decay damage like a rot type of damage instead of instantly damaging you and this is a good thing and this is a very basic general overview of the build i know there's a lot of different ways to optimize it let me know if you found 
some really cool, interesting tricks with this build. I'm not saying this is the best build. I said it's a sad video. I just think it's a different build that could be very interesting, especially if you're looking to step away from, or maybe you're getting tired of that shock barrier build. You want to try something else, just, just to try it out, or maybe you need that spot healing. Let me know how you feel about this build. Let me know if I missed out on something, and I'll see you in my next guide.